forgetting the socio-politics debate, I'm talking about you and your own journey. Again and again, you have accepted truths that you find in the Christian faith. Yeah. So I'm saying, why not just complete the rest of that journey, bro? How are we doing? Long time no see. Do I look like I've been run out of the park? <coughs> well, I mean, I'm not shouting. That's the start. <laughs> you know, do you want to come and talk? Uh, well, I, I'd like an update where you're up to. Yeah. I was reading yesterday about it as well. I can't remember what I was reading. What we're gone? Tell us. Um, it was to do with. Uh, well, I don't remember. But why don't you give me some of the selling points on Christianity? Some of the selling points. Mm. Okay, if you follow Jesus Christ. You, you're, you're, you're following a paradigm of an example that will make you the best human being that you could possibly be. Because if I, if I said to you, like, what, what are the important things in life? And I said to you things that are important that you should build your life on are things like hope, yep. faith, yep. love, yep. Yeah, prudence. Prudence means wisdom, mm. careful decisions, mm. not hasty decisions. Good morals, things Justice, like justice, um, wisdom, like, you'd agree with all of that, right? You, you would agree with all of that? Of course. Yeah? Now, the, 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 the thing is, within Islam, I'm kind of conscious now of our camera getting blown over. Um, that one looks a bit heavy. Yeah. That one looks like a sturdy one. Clearly, Allah doesn't like EF Dawa, he's just blown the camera over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cheap shot, cheap shot. <laughs> Sorry. Never to miss an opportunity. Remember, right? remember, Allah, uh, everything happens according to Allah's will. So reason, Allah did that. In front Allah, of you. Allah did that, and the way it happened in front of me, it's almost like Allah is giving me a gift to mock EF Dawa. <laughs> <laughs> Allah's on my side, bro. So, in terms of. He's trying of, to call you over to the right side. Yeah. So, the, 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 now, when you look at. If you follow the example of Jesus, mm. these are the kinds of things that you're going to cultivate within yourself. If you follow the example of Muhammad as found in the Hadiths, the things that you're going to cultivate within yourself are things of hatred of the Christian, hatred of the Jew, the idea of supremacism, the idea that you're better than everyone else just because, you know, you're a Muslim. You're going to believe that... You're going to end up fetishizing your life. You're going to think that you'll have to grow a beard like an Arab and dress like an Arab and speak in Arabic and bow down to an Arabic city. And, and, and the, the best human being that you can be is a cheap knockoff of an Arab, you know? Whereas in Christianity, it's saying that the best human being that you can be is the, the, the image of God within you. That is those things of nobility that are already within your soul, yeah? And that's having humility, it's not having pride, it's having charity and building up the conviction of love within yourself so that that imbues your character, your personality, your attitudes, and in how you treat other people. Now, I've, I've demonstrated over four years that love doesn't mean being a doormat. Of course. Because I'm not teaching that kind of Christianity. I'm not teaching wet man's liberal I understand. middle is, class. Is, is that Christianity? No. That, ah. That's a, a deformed understanding of the Christian faith. What, the one of turn the, the other cheek, the, 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 the doormat Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a deformity of Christian piety that's and spirituality. It. Nothing in our faith teaches us to be doormats, ever. But what it means is, is like... What about pray for your enemies and all that kind of... That's what I was researching, the pray for your enemies okay. kind of stuff. Let, let's think about that. Why, why is it important to pray for your enemies? Because if you pray Put for your enemies... So, no, no, pray for, not against. Pray they, for justice. Now, I know what they mean. They pray for your enemies that good things happen to them. But if they were to adopt the teaching of Christ, for example, perhaps you guys wouldn't be enemies. Not exactly. Could be, yes, so, could so, be. so when we pray for our enemies, mm. we don't pray that they will prosper in their evil. <laughs> when we pray for our enemies, we pray that their hearts will be converted away from evil. Mm, mm, mm. Makes sense. Now, that's a good prayer, right? It is. Is it that is. a better... Now, answer me this question. Is it a better prayer to pray that your enemies be converted away from evil and injustice than it is to curse them because of the evil and their injustice. I understand, yeah, and then in Quran it says eye for an eye and things like that. But is that human nature that you can pray for your enemies and things go, things just become okay? Yeah. Things get pacified. That's not really how it is on earth. Yeah. I would argue that some of the teachings in the Quran with regard to 
uh, disputes might be more easily applied on Earth than... So, so that, and I, I agree with you, mm. human nature is, if you hit me in the face, I hit you twice in the face. That's human nature. Yeah, I do back to you what you did to me, and then I give you a little bit of interest, 20% on top of what you did to me. Make sure you pay your jizzy up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, but the point is, as Christians, like, we are, that we're called to a nobler way of life. So that is why we pray for our enemies, because that we don't want the hatred of our enemies to define the boundaries of our love. If we allow the boundaries of our love to encompass our enemies so that when they can't do evil, we're in a place to bless them. And bear in mind, some Christians even have such a perfection of love that they bless their enemies even whilst they are doing evil. Mm. You know, that, 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 and that's a perfection I don't have. But, it, but, but this is a much more nobler, it calls us to a greater, higher. It is very, higher. Noble. It is I, very noble. Now, And that's the see, nobility I'm calling you to. I right? understand, but you see with the Crusaders, that do fault stuff that you guys talk yeah, about, yeah. what was their angle? Because that wasn't pray for your enemy. So the, 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 the Crusaders were trying to liberate Christian lands that had been conquered and occupied by Muslims. Right. They were majority Christian lands that they were, they were trying to take back. Now they failed because they were working beyond the logistical framework of their economies. They won militarily. But logistically, they couldn't sustain those... The occupation. The, or the, the, the liberation. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. couldn't sustain it. And, and, but the point is, those lands were majority Christian. Those lands had been conquered by Muslims. They were Christian before. Mm. And those lands were under the occupation of Islam. So the Crusades were totally justified. Oh, I understand. Yeah, I'm just saying that in the, in the first place, had they not prayed for their enemies, perhaps they wouldn't have been occupied. Well, they were paying for and, it. and then when the Crusaders came and the Dukes you know, Do you know, do you know when the Christians liberated Palestine, out Rima? Right. They, they were still Muslim populations living in those, in those countries. Yeah. It wasn't that we just excluded all the Muslims. There were Muslims living under the command and rule of the Crusader kingdoms. But the thing is, they had had their power taken away from them. And it's the same in Islamic Spain. Mm. Initially, there were Muslim populations living under Christian rule. The same in Islamic, it was the same when Sicily was liberated. Muslims lived there. And, and Christians tried to bless them. Do you know? Like, sorry, I'm just keeping my eye on somebody. Looks, it's all right. Someone looking a bit dodgy. He's looking a bit dodgy. Oh, my man, yeah, he's, yeah. He's got, he's got his hood up, he's got his that mask same demeanour as the other guy. Same demeanour as the other guy. Yeah, yeah, no, and he's, looking, he's walking around looking suspicious. That shouldn't have happened, man. No matter yeah. what Hatton says, you shouldn't have got stabbed in the face, bro. That's taking it too far. But that's what Muhammad did, bro. You know that Muhammad had people executed that insulted him. Do you know about that? Have you read the stories about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the hadith as well, where the guy killed the lady for insulting the Prophet. And the Prophet al -Salam said no punishment for him, yeah. these, these, these were justified. So, so that's the Prophet you're following at the moment. And I'm saying that there's a better way than that in Jesus Christ. Now, I know that that noble message resonates with your heart. I know it does. I can see it in you. People can see it in you. The question is, you've just got to have the courage, bro, to go, do you know what? I see a better way. I'm going to walk that way. Damn the consequences. I don't care what people think of me. I don't care what people do to me. They got in with their lives. I'm going to pursue my life. I think this way is more noble. This is the way I'm going to go. Mm. So, so do it, bro. Stop holding yourself back. It's not a case of holding back. I love Christians. I've got a lot of love for Christian people. Yeah. Every Christians I've met, they've been most of them have been really polite and friendly. A lot of Christian people have told me that they're praying for me, yeah, they which are. I appreciate a lot. And there'll be people watching this that'll be praying for you. It's appreciated. Most definitely. It's, um, Tell me, do you see, in, in the things that I've said about yeah. the selling points of Christianity, yeah. do you see nobility and goodness and, and, and things that you want to follow? Absolutely, yeah. Christianity, most, you, the same with the other two religions as well. It's definitely got the potential to make you a better person. Christianity do, does definitely Definitely. Have and do you see Jesus Christ as a person worthy of following him? Worthy of following do you, in, in, do you, the, in the sense that he is a prophet of God, absolutely. So why don't you follow him? I do. No, I'm not talking about the Islamic Jesus, because that ain't the Jesus of the Bible. You and I both know that the teachings that I've just talked about, about loving and blessing your enemies, because that's the one you've been researching recently, yep, yep, yep. isn't found in Islam. In Islam, you're called to curse your enemies. But we're called to bless our enemies. Now, is it more nobler? Does it make you a more noble person if you bless your enemies or curse of them? Of course, of course, but it depends if nobility is the, the end goal here. Right. 
And that, that is a great question. Which is that, I assume what you Christian guys are looking so, for. So what, what, what the end goal for a Christian mm. is to worship and glorify God by being his image on earth. And God is noble, right? So if God is noble, then we should be noble because we should reflect his image on earth. So if God is noble, we need to be noble. If God is compassionate, we need to be compassionate. If God is merciful, we need to be merciful. If God is love, then we need to be love. Yeah? We need to be the light of the world that shines in the darkness. We need to be the salt that preserves the earth. Yeah. That's what we're called to be. That, that's the end goal, to, to be the image of God on earth because that's how we glorify God on earth. Now, is that a noble thing? Of course. Right. That's the road I'm calling you to, but Islam doesn't have that teaching. You can't be like Allah because Allah is not like anything he's created. Yeah, 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 that's, that's kind of the difference there, isn't it? With, yeah. with, with Islam, you've got a specific set of rules you're supposed to adhere to. So the goal in Islam in is submission. But As is Christianity. No. To submit to the teachings of Jesus no. and turn the other cheek on Submission, them. doing the, the commandments of our Lord, is the way of t changing our character into the image of God. Yeah. When Christ gives a bunch of, his, his Sermon on the Mount, for instance, that which, which you've read about blessing your enemies. Of course. That's him discipling us on how we can be the image of God on earth. Because if you can expand the boundaries of your love so that they encompass even those that hate you, then you have taken the higher road. You have become the image of God. You have become nobler because God, think about it, we are the unworthy creatures of God. We are the unworthy um, things that God has made, but God deigns to interact with us yeah. because his love is boundless. I see what you mean about taking the higher road and stuff, but human nature would suggest yeah. that the one that isn't slightly hostile in those kind of situations would become a victim. Right. So the higher road and mobility is all well and good, but no one wants to be victimized. Right, but, but have you ever seen me be victimized in this park? No, but you're, I would argue you're not really following the hadiths of Jesus. Right, but I, 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 and I, I would like you to show where I'm not following the teachings of Jesus. Um, with regard to your aggressive demeanor, but Jesus would not do it. You know that band that Christians wear, WWJD? Right, you say Jesus wouldn't do it. Ah, right, will you hold that microphone a second? I trust you. I don't think, you, no, you're going to hold it up. Oh, go on. You say Jesus wouldn't do anything aggressive. Yeah. What, are you going to show me the one where he started slapping people? Right? Well, I just want to show you that you, you've got the wrong image of Jesus. Go on. Because Jesus isn't no walkover, bro. Right? In the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 13, And the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves, and money changers mm. and seated at their table. So that's a courtyard like this, mm, mm, mm. right? And he made a scourge of cords, that's a whip. Now does a person who's a gentle Jesus pacifist make a weapon? Yep, yep, agreed. Right? And drove them all out of the temple. That's the temple court. That's not that's not a little space. It's probably actually probably about the same size as Speaker's Court. I see what you mean. And he drove them all out. One could argue that Bob the Builder is trying to drive Islamists out of the park. I, I, I don't, Same as the Sermon don't, on the Mount. Don't, don't, Akin to that. Don't do me a disservice. A I disservice? Want, I don't, don't do me a disservice. That was a compliment. I want to see Islamists driven out of the world. Understood. I, I, I'll be happy when there are no Islamists in Mecca and the Kaaba is a cathedral. Like, uh, I, I think that... You can't, just, you can't just destroy the religion though, Bob, man. I'm not, no, no, I'm not Jesus talking... Would, Jesus would argue that we live in harmony with one another. Well, well show me. What's Jesus' stance with regard to... Um, show, show, me, show me where Jesus says, let's that's, live that's in harmony. That's what I'm trying to understand, actually. What's Jesus' stance with regard to other belief systems and cultures? Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. Mm. Jesus also says that those who are not with me are against me, and those who do not bring in with me scatter abroad. Jesus says that I have not come to bring peace but a sword, to turn father against son, to turn daughter against mother, to turn brother against brother and sister against sister. Because he who chooses family is more than me, is not worthy of me. Jesus says that if you don't start with him, you haven't started with the truth. You're not building your life on the hack. You're not building your life on truth. And if you're not building your life on truth, Peace Sorry with you, bro. Oh, Peace with you, bro. Have you noticed Steve Barnes is around? I, I want to talk to him, but I'm... I'm I, I, grab I JC. Yeah. Grab JC. Oh, sorry, you want... No, no, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I want to talk to him. Please, please, can you deliver a quick message to PC Barnes? Asking him not to leave before I get to say hello. And also, Steve is doing a bit of a leaving thing, if you, if you can make it over there. But I'm right in the middle of a... Sorry. I will turn it. I'll pass the message.
If you see JC, tell him to come and grab the camera. So, so my point, Christ says, Christ says that, that he is the beginning of truth. And he's uncompromising on this. You've got to start with him. You've got to start by being his disciple. And if you're not starting there, you're heading in the wrong direction. If you're not moving towards Jesus, you're moving into hell. Right. Okay. So he isn't about one of these lovey-dovey. He's not like the Church of England vicars that you see on TV that say, oh, all religions lead to God and we should all celebrate our diversity. Christ is, you build on him or you're building on nothing. You're building on quicksand if you don't build on him. Right. So with Christianity, we've kind of got a ticket for unlimited sin then. Because we're born in sin regardless. I can do a bag of sins and then accept Christ and I'm good. N now, there you go again. Hold that. Go on. Hold that. Because I'm going to show you you're wrong again. Now, I, I understand where that argument's coming from. That's mm. a normal Islamic argument. Is oh, really? Yes. That, I that thought is... it was a logical no, conclusion. No, come on, bro. We both know that that is, that is something that's said amongst Muslims. And you're coming from a Muslim background and everybody who watches this knows that. So there's no point pretending. Man's not pretending. Right? Bro. Listen to this. <laughs> right? In Romans chapter 6, yeah. this is the Apostle Paul writing. And he's, he's just talking about Christ's work on the cross and how it saves us. Right? He's just talking about that. Listen, and, and he's doing that in chapter 5. And in chapter 6 of Romans, listen to what he says. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin? so that grace may increase, may it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. So there's no free ticket to sin in Christianity. We're told that when you become a Christian, you have to fight sin. At baptism, we say, I'm going to take this from you. Go on. At baptism, we say, um, you know, we, we make a promise to fight against sin, the devil, and the world. Mm. Which means that there's no free ticket to sin. That, that's just a, 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 another Islamic trope. It's, but before the baptism, everything that was done is white. The slate's wiped clean. Yeah, right? your, white, your slate is wiped clean. regardless of according to the Christian. Now, now, being born in sin is, a, again, a bit of a misunderstood thing amongst Muslims. Being born in sin doesn't mean that you're born a sinner. Right. Being born in sin means that you're born with that tendency to sin. Is it not because of uh, Eve biting the apple? And now we're all classed as sinners and born in sin unless we accept Jesus. We, the, the, that, that's called the original sin. That was the, right. the picture metaphor. That was the picture metaphor used in Genesis. But yes, it's this idea that our human nature is corrupted and because of that corrupt human nature, we have a tendency towards sin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would agree with that. And that's what the Bible teaches. Islam doesn't teach that. Now, you agree with Christianity more than you agree with Islam. Because Islam teaches that you're born a blank slate, you're born in Islam, you're born in submission to Allah, and then the society corrupts you. Christianity teaches that you have the seed of corruption in your heart at your birth. And that's why you corrupt your society. The epigenetics would argue that the Islamic stance might be more towards the truth. If you put someone in an environment with corruption, it could awaken certain parts of their DNA that makes them corrupt. That doesn't answer why the society was corrupt in the first place. Societies are corrupt because human beings are corrupt. We're selfish creatures, so we act selfishly. And that is why there's corruption. Because we abuse power, we abuse politics, we abuse economics. Yeah, 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 it's uh, we're self, engineered that way. We're self-interested, it's in our genetics, that's why we create societies that do it. And Islam is a religion that just imitates that kind of corruption, because it's about one group dominating another group. Christianity holds the same stance as well, Bob. No. It does, you just told me that Jesus said you're either building on quicksand or building on me, which right. is the same domination from one group. All right, hold on. No, the truth is the truth. You've got to build on truth. Right. The truth is that human beings are sinful. So Christian politics, when we express our faith politically, it isn't primarily about me dominating you. It's about the state mitigating the effects of sin. Yeah? Right. And the, that mitigation of the effects of sin is what Christian politics is about. So it's about restricting the influence and the power of sin. And that is why European nations that were saturated in Christian teaching created the kind of civilization that is now the envy of the entire world and everybody wants to come and live in Europe. Perfect. 
If Islam had been able to create that kind of civilization, which it didn't, the world would have been flocking to Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia has been saturated in 1400 years of Islam. But people are not flocking to Saudi Arabia. They're flocking to the West mm. because the West is the best. And it's the best because for, two, for over a thousand years, it built itself on Christianity. Now, uh, forgetting the socio-politics debate, I'm talking about you and your own journey. Again and again, you have accepted truths that you find in the Christian faith. Yeah. So I'm saying, why not just complete the rest of that journey, bro? There's plenty of things within the Christian faith that one could agree with without necessarily subscribing to the ideology. If that so, makes sense. so the, the, the fundamental question. Other people would like they'd hear what you say yeah. and they dispute it, even though deep down they think, well, yeah, it does make sense. But I can't let go of this egotistical battle where I concede my position. You get it? It's, I agree with certain things. Like don't, it makes a lot of logical person. sense. I'm not. I would. I would. I would hope that you would. Uh, Agree with me that I'm not that person. Uh, you don't come across like ah, that. When you say stuff that makes sense, I agree with it. Yeah. But it just doesn't necessarily mean I can uh, become a follower of Mr. Jesus. Well, I, well I, is that the, the fundamental question that you need to ask yourself is this. Yeah. Who is Jesus Christ? If he is the Messiah that is promised in the Old Testament, if you understood the concept of Messiah, you'd see why I, I, I point this argument out all the time. If you understood, and I encourage you to research it, understand what the Messiah is that is promised in Judaism. Because when you've got that Messiah, you don't need another prophet. Mm. You don't need a seal of the prophets. You don't need another revelation. Mm. Once you've got that Messiah, you've got everything you need. And Christians are, are convinced that Jesus Christ is that Messiah. And Islam teaches that Jesus Christ is that Messiah, but they don't understand what that Messiah is because Muhammad didn't understand it when he, when he talked about it. But if you understood what that Messiah is, then you don't need any other prophets. It's done. It's done with Jesus. It's all complete. It's all finished, as he said on the cross. You know? And, and if it is finished, we don't need anything else. And if you're not walking towards Jesus, that Jesus that is found in the apostolic witness, you're walking to hell, bro. And you need to fear the fire and take that the day of judgment seriously. Now, your, your heart resonates with the nobility of Christ's teaching. You already accept positions that are more Christian than Islamic, like the idea that we have a sinful nature, rather than we're born in Islam and then society corrupts us. So your- I'd say it's a bit of both. I agree with you, it's a bit of both. It's a, it, it, it's a feedback loop. One feeds into the other. But the, the, but the human nature had to be corrupted Of course, first. the fact that we allow those kind of environments to exist shows that we as a, as a species are yeah. corrupt anyway. And, and the kind of injustices that you would rage against in capitalism are exactly the kind of injustices you find in Islam. Whereas in Christianity, it, it teaches me that even though you're not a Christian now, you have a dignity equal to my own because you're made in the image of God. And that's Christian teaching. So your dignity as being made in the image of God comes before your ethnicity, it comes before your religion. Islam doesn't have that teaching. Islam teaches that even the worst Muslim is better than the best Christian because they're Muslim. We're not equal in dignity. Now you know which side you agree with. And I'm willing to put money on the fact that you agree that human beings have equal dignity. Yeah, I would judge it based on their character, their actions, rather than ethnicity or religious affiliation. But is everybody born with equal dignity? No, not necessarily. Some so you think that a, an innocent child... Some people are born in the street and some people are born in Chelsea Hospital. That's got nothing to do that's, with their dignity. That's dignity. No, it isn't. That's dignity. What, you're born in a place with no running water or you're born in Chelsea. There's a lot this. No, no, on, man. no. A big thing. I know what you mean, that we're all humans and we the, all have the, equal the rights. The value of that human being is that the same. is born in the gutter is equal to the richest man on earth. According that, to Christianity. And, and that's the difference between Christianity and Islam. You're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. this. I was arguing as a society, we don't, we don't apply that. But yeah, yeah, if yeah, that's but, what Christianity but, says. But which, which do you think is a better teaching? The idea that the richest and the poorest have equal dignity, or the idea that the poorest Muslim is better than the richest Christian? Mm. I'm asking you. No, I know what you mean. Things have kind of been turned into a little bit of a football club here. I, I still want this club, I'm better than I you. I still want you to answer my question. Which is... You're just talking for you. Go on. Which is the better teaching? 
the Christian idea that everyone in this park has equal dignity to everyone else in this park, regardless of their religion, regardless of their physical ability, regardless of their ethnicity, or the idea that the Muslims in this park are better than everyone else because they're Muslim. Which is, which is the better idea? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to agree with the Christian stance on that one. Yeah. The fact that we all have equal rights. So and stuff. equal dignity. Equal dignity, but we yeah we're we're all we yeah. We and have and the then we have to create like the that. laws that uh, facilitate that equal dignity. That's why in the West we have this political discourse about equality because of that Christian prism, that Christian framework. It's coming from that idea. They're not having that debate in the Islamic world because in Islam it teaches that a Muslim slave is better than a Christian freeman. So, and, and you see that in Islamic laws, like the witness of a woman is half that of a man. The, the blood money paid for a Christian is, is less than that of a Muslim. So I'm not making these things up. I mean, it's there in Islamic law, but you don't get that here. Because here we're working to an ideology that says you have equal dignity. Hey, it's, been, it's been deformed in, in terms of talking about the humanitarian ethic and, and, and human rights. But that's where it's coming from. It's base is this idea of equal dignity because of the imatio deo, the image of God. Now you agree with the Christian worldview again. So again and again, your conscience, your heart is telling you that Christian teaching is better than Islamic teaching. So I'm just inviting you to complete the journey, bro, and to follow Jesus Christ, who you're already recognizing as being a better teacher to you than Muhammad. I see where you're coming from. In terms of eternal salvation and making it into heaven, however, if as we believe Islam is the final message. One would have to follow that in order to get into heaven and therefore they could be deemed better because they're following the correct path. That could be the Islamic stance on it. I would argue that's probably what they're saying. No, if that's not what they're saying and it's not what they do. Well, if you're following the truth, that obviously puts you in a better position than someone who No, is. Muslims, Muslims actually believe that, that Christians and Jews are worth less, actually worth less than a Muslim. And they Jews show that. believe that as well? Sure, uh, I'm not a Jew. No, no, I'm not. Just highlighting a comparison. So, so no, no. The Goyim. The, 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 the Jews have, have not got the full testament. They haven't got the new covenant. The problem with their religion is that God wanted to demonstrate to the world his power and authority by preserving essentially a bunch of savage slaves all the way through history. And he's done that as a testament. Other nations have gone through the same thing that the Jews have gone through and they've died. So the, the, the thing that I am trying to get you to see is that the Jews, the Jewish faith is incomplete in the way that it thinks about things. Would they agree with that sentiment, the Jewish? The, yeah, the Jews believe that the Messiah is still to come. And when the Messiah comes, the, the, even the Goyim will have salvation. They just don't believe that, the, the, that Christ Jesus is the Messiah. Right. But we do believe that Christ Jesus is the Messiah. So that's not even a debate for us. So my point to you is that, that if, you're, if, you're saying, if you're saying, if you recognize that this is bad and this is a better teaching, it's incumbent upon you to follow the better teaching and to follow the better teacher. And that's all I'm inviting you to do, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna keep researching, I, I, like, I enjoy. Are you ready to take that next step now? No, sir. While stopping you? I have to do more research. Are you worried it's, about the consequences? No, it's, uh, I'd like, I want to make correct decisions and I can't just uh, charge into uh, something without fully appreciating what it is I'm getting myself involved in. Well, I, I want to encourage you to, to continue doing that research. I gave you my email address. I shouted you, you never hollered back. Uh, okay, I, I have like 900 emails I'm not, I'm that I'm not. replying to. I know, your thing must get busy. Your yeah, BTB so, so what happens is an email comes in and then like a dozen other emails come in and then they all end up going down and, and what I do is I try to do a few from page one, a few from page two of you so that I get through. Just get through it. Yeah, so that's the reason. Yeah, but keep persisting. That's why I thought you'd been exiled. You don't read the emails no more. You no, don't turn no, out. no, I do. I am replying to emails. I just can't keep up. They had you out in Yemen somewhere facing yeah. execution. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> maybe, maybe here at some point I'll be executed. Who knows? Um, like, do you, you, you've, you've got some books from me, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you read any of them? Yeah, Devil, uh, Living on the Devil's Doorstop was an interesting one. Did you enjoy it? It was a bit long-winded, but I kind of, uh, the concept of it was nice. Going yeah. there and helping people in a bit of a 
mad place. Okay, I want I want to give you another book because I always give a book to everyone who has a decent conversation with me. Thank you. This is talking about the seven deadly sins. Would you like it back afterwards? No, this is your gift. I give it to you. Well, you're done with it, yeah. You've squeezed all the knowledge out. Of it. I, I am giving it to you as a gift. Yes, I could always squeeze a bit more. But there you go. Like, I've got the highlights. Yeah, you've got the where I highlighted <laughs> stuff, or where someone else did. My point to you is that the the um, Christian spirituality, in a nutshell, can be summed up about the cultivation of virtue and the restriction of vice. Mm. And, uh, you know, in, in our tradition of our spirituality, we talk about moral transformation through the prism of virtues and vices. And one particular Cassian, um, father of the church called Cassian, talked to the monks that he was, he was discipling about seven deadly sins. Seven sins that when they get their claws into you, they dig deep and they drag you down to hell. And these are the seven sins. Mm. And then it talks about, as Christians, how we can respond to those seven deadly sins. So this is about heart transformation. It's about a heart transplant, you know? And this is one of the secrets and the depths of Christian spirituality. And as you read it, ask yourself if it makes sense. Does it, does it touch you? Because if you find that it does, you're tapping into and you're drinking from the cup of Christian wisdom. And that's, that's what I'm inviting you to do. Thank you, man. I appreciate right. it. I'm definitely going to read it. Always nice to nice talk one. to you, bro. You look after yourself. Shout out. Yeah. shout out Sean Paul, yeah, leader of the opposition in Belize, recently appointed, going to be fighting governmental corruption. You'll see. Okay. Thank you. Bro. God bless. Take you care. Got, um, I was speaking to the brother. We spoke to him before. He's a genuine heart. I think he's sincerely looking for truth. He's one of the sincere Muslims that I keep talking about. They're not all Islamists. They're not all jihadi supporters. Some of them are just decent people, like that bro. And you can recognize his decency because he finds Jesus attractive. Yay. And he agrees with Christian teaching more than he agrees with Islam. The sinfulness of man. The idea that all human beings have an equal dignity regardless of ethnicity or religion. These are Christian ideas, not Islamic ones. So, you know, and so pray for him. And pray that he'll be brave enough to take the next step that his heart and his conscience is calling him to and to become a disciple of Jesus like so many other Muslims are. Praise the Lord, thank you, Bob Tila.